Good morning, good morning. Good morning, good morning. We'll get this live stream going in a few minutes. I'm back. Welcome back. Welcome back, everyone. As I was complaining about, <laughs> I keep always disappearing and coming back. That's my thing, right? Gone forever? No, he's back. Ten times already. Um, Yeah, broker problems. Confirm information. All right, I confirmed my updated information. All right, one to two days. All right, four or five days go by. Okay, wait two more days. <clears throat> three days go by call them up blah, blah back and forth back and forth they just keep telling me two days one to two days for two weeks so then uh i go on a hunt for another broker and then uh, this that and the other and i finally got one okay so i'm back i have not traded two weeks <laughs> not just cryptos uh, a little this and that, but no Forex. Okay. So I'll give a few minutes for people to get in here. going to talk about that we're not going to talk about that we're not going to talk about okay i'm going to be professional get going uh so long story short haven't traded 
because of the broker issue. I'm all straightened out. And uh, I did not plan on streaming today. But like, why not? I guess. <laughs> it's hike and trade. Let's see what we get. Tarth look a little choppy sloppy. Yeah, I, you know, eh, we'll get into that discussion later. Customer service. <laughs> like outsourced. I, f I think these people are just home, right? And then they get like a call and it says information for what the person's calling about. So they're like, okay, hi, I work for IG. Yeah, how can I help you? Okay, I'll let them know. There's nothing you can do. They do nothing for you. I'll I'll pass that on for you. All right. Then they go back to bed or something. I've escalated your support ticket. Okay. That's great. So what's going on out here? Here's where the charts were left off. Probably from the last stream. I don't know. Start fresh. You know, I always just take a minute to take it in. Cheers, coffee drinkers. Tea. Beer. TP? What's TP? You mean IG? Talking about the broker I'm using? What's TP? Good morning, good morning. So we're going to do some live analysis, and maybe that'll uh, help your trading uh, in some way. All right. Reset. The great reset. Oh, no, don't talk about that. Okay. Stop it. Tough. Keep my mouth shut. So uh, I'm going to apply that method that I use and uh, see where it leads. All right. So daily chart. Here I'm just looking for it. Do we have a trend or a range? Or, and what's the momentum here? Well, we've been ranging. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven days going on here of being in this range. Before that, okay, we were trending up. So then the question is maybe, is this a reaccumulation and another up move? Is this a reversal? What's going on in here? But there's no momentum at the moment. And trend, it kind of lost its structure here as far as the highs and lows. It's, it's rangy with the highs here. A little fake break pattern. Kind of sitting in the middle. But that would be the question from the overview is are we going to continue to possibly range or maybe this is the beginning of an up move uptrend structure right or at least going back to the high or something right so where where does it go from here middle of this area so of course nice that we're already hitting that fib and we can it's not possible to have a box up here. That's not it. I love when everyone's watching and knows exactly what I need to be clicking, but I can't figure it out. My box is gone. That was here. So. Luckily, in the situation, that doesn't give a particular direction, trend, momentum stuck in this range here, seven days, uh, that we're in an area that's going to give us information about where we may go, which is the FIB zone. Morning. Welcome, welcome. So, 
Let's go to the one hour. Yeah, we were been in here before, and that was what? One day. <clears throat> okay. So I can see right off the bat that this is looking more weak in this area. Uh, really, the last few days tells us the story here. So first of all, entering here is going to tell us about buyers into this zone. Is it a retracement and a continuation up, as I said, or is it going to get through here? Low activity, you're going to get through it. And the activity did not increase very much. Pretty low. Finally, we do get some activity. And, okay, it's an up move on some volume. But when this hit, actually this came in as some weakness here. There's certainly some selling here. Then you go here. Okay, weakness selling, right? Okay. And then uh, yesterday, high volume leading to lower prices. Not much accumulation or rejection off of those prices. We're starting off this session, just falling off a cliff. It's bearish. Based on where the high activity is, there's money, big money short here, short here, started shorting here, and where they would have been buying was quite inactive. 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 Okay. All that just to tell you, uh, it's going down. Yeah, you can see that. Well, uh, but I would actually be considering buying here if if we had a bullish background. Um, working off of the background sort of trading. I would not be doing that at the moment. Now, if we get really low and get see some large, large demand or something, but generally here you can see the where the background is showing weakness, short positions. They're in it. They're holding. And we'll find out if that's U.S. dollar driven and we have correlation with the other pairs with the same situation or what's going on. Maybe the euro's just weak. We'll find out what's exactly behind that. <clears throat> so the projection is now. Where's my other line up here too? <clears throat> Supposed to have lines. Projection is <laughs> to go here. Doesn't mean we have to go in a straight line, you know, whatever. Uh, but that's the next area to find out what's going to be going on. Uh, it should easily get there without too much problem. Um, and judging by the situation in the background, there there won't be so much demand that, that it pops off and, and maybe we continue down. That's the projection right now. Go down to whatever support is back there. Whatever, whatever. Day trading, you know. Okay, at least we talk about this right now. So, the question is how to get in this. I would obviously not want to just jump in and chase this. Up moves in weakness or scalp entries or whatever. Uh, we're just getting into the session here. And then we have some normal volume. Let's just get a sense of what's going on. It still may represent, you know, it still does represent and may show some buy activity. And maybe things change and there's going to be huge buying. So at least, again, we're in this area that's going to be important and tell us. But as of now, this thing is expected to break and have it continue down. That's what they're positioned for. Dr. Phil. Oh. Uh, Well, hopefully, uh, I don't know if you wanted to, you were asking about something. If you get a chance, a few minutes to chat. Okay, so I'm just taking it in, and that's an important piece of information here. Now, if the other ones are similar, then we know that it's the U.S. dollar driving this whole situation, making everything weak. That would be strength on the U.S. dollar. And quickly, we can just find out. Yes, okay. Some may look weaker than others based on what the you know the, the other currency in the pair is doing, but that's apparently the same high volume point kind of information. So it is because of the dollar building up some strength. All good, all logical. 
Anything else? Uh, what's back there? Too lazy to do this stuff. I don't know. Just tell me where to sell. All this nonsense. Not worried about that. Ranging. Again, we already know. And again, it's repeating here. That we're not in a strong momentum in either direction. You'd have to call this a distribution or a redistribution or a building up of short positions into higher prices. Call it that for short, for long. So whatever, it's about looking for places to go short. If we're moving up, I'm looking for weakness. Mark up some areas. That'll show us, and we already see here, the double top at the 50. There's a box real quick there. All right. So for example, that somewhere in here could be a fake break, could be a six way overshoot. Right, right, right. We can get into the five minutes, see how good this stuff is looking as far as how aggressive are they shorting and what's the deal now. They might want to wait. They might want to wait for higher prices and do a fake break out up here, right? Who knows? But that's so much selling in this area that it's probably not going to revisit that. High should probably more much more likely continue down now before reaching all the way up there. But maybe a pop up weakness to short again. We'll get into the five minute and see. But now we know the basic situation here. U.S. dollar strength causing bearish conditions on the dollar pairs. Sell in whatever way you see fit. I have a couple of ways, and we'll see what presents itself. Uh, volatility. <laughs> What's behind your question is my question to you, if I may answer your question with a question. Are you feeling like there's something about the Forex that you don't like? Uh, and maybe there's something else that you're going to like better? I mean, if, if, you're, if you're not happy with your performance, I don't think switching instruments is going to help. In some ways, obviously, in my opinion, uh, the Forex is, is, can be the most predictable, especially intraday kind of moves. So again, bearish conditions we're seeing so far. Let's see if we see it again here. And we actually have a downtrend structure here, so that's a little more obvious. Which tells us that the Australian dollar is weaker than the euro and the pound. And if you compare that, I don't even have to load it up and look. Or we already know the AE is moving down. The AG, Australian dollar pound, is moving down. Apparently. It's all relative, right? Uh, so this is going short in a downtrend so to speak. It's all the same cause, but you know, the high volume stuff and the weakness shows up in a slightly different way, but it's all confirming weakness really traditionally, and especially these points here showing large selling. I'll mark up some areas, see what's going on. And so now that we looked at the three main dollar pairs that I trade, the next question is, is the U.S. dollar and the yen correlated and we're going to get the same story on the yen pairs? Some of you know the answer already. Okay, so you're having a particular problem with news coming out and throwing off your trade. Am I correct? That can happen. Yep. I'm not going to uh, pretend the news doesn't sometimes just throw a wrench in the whole thing. Like you're accumulating, you get long, news comes out, and the news, it pops up, but it turns into a big sign of weakness, and nobody's buying anymore, and the thing reverses off news. Of course, those things happen. 
But doesn't the news, doesn't news affect everything, really? Isn't it all kind of correlated? If the dollars are jumping around, then so is X, Y, Z, whatever else. Maybe. But, you know, other things are not my area of expertise. I'm used to dealing with this stuff. Really, the only thing I would, you know, I don't even want to use the term give advice. The only thing I would discuss <laughs> in that way would really be Forex and uh, cryptos. I don't, I'm not interested in day trading other things, so I couldn't tell you. Gold, silver, oil, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I'm just taking positions where maybe I'll glance at the five minute chart, but I'm and I'm in those positions for five weeks or whatever. So I could tell you from that perspective, you know. Um, where are we gonna be selling today? Can we sell today? Well, we should be selling. So basically, you know, my two ways of getting in are, oh no, let's, let's look at the yen pairs and see if it's the same situation. Well, looks pretty weak to me. I'm glad I'm here to tell you this. Would not want to be buying. Yes, I know. Amazing advice. Um... So again, there's downtrend structures here, so or and then all that business. Wow. High high volume weakness and then the high volume continues and leading to lower prices, right? Get finally found some demand all the way down here from the sell off starting there. Probably something happened in the news. I don't know, I don't care. But a lot of this volume was not just off the low. There's a lot of stuff going on in here, including more selling. And if that's really your strength volume off the low price, well, that's, yeah, that's the low price. You got a wick. Then that's not much. All right. So anyway, very bearish. Okay. So we have strong US dollar. We have strong yen. Everything versus that, it's getting its butt kicked right now. Especially the yen is very strong. If we look at the dollar yen itself, you see how weak the U.S. dollar is against the, the yen. So that just shows you how strong that yen is right now. Or at least has been here. I'm not worried about this chart. All right. Uh, step one. Where's smart money position from? What direction? Positioned off the last few days into the up moves shorting. And as far as entering trades, again, my two main ways of doing it are uh, looking for a retracement and weakness, especially at technical areas and certain simple patterns. Um, or if it looks like it's just going to run off and not give any sort of bounce and I'm not seeing enough strength to even expect that or whatever, you know, the scalp entry is a way to get in without waiting for a retracement, but doing it in a, in a, in a proper way. Like I wouldn't do it right into support. Apple. All right. So that's where we are. Hopefully that's helpful to you already. Um, yeah, the last two weeks, uh, if you know Dr. Phil, um, I, I missed everything because I wasn't able to trade. So I don't desire to open the charts if I can't take a trade. It's going to be frustrating. But um, 
I don't know if it's been really bad choppiness the last week. No, uh, from what we saw the last week, from what I just saw, went a little sideways before that. It seemed all right. Um, try to narrow down what the problem is, and maybe you can give some examples, and then we could discuss that. Get into the specifics a little bit of what you think the problem is. Maybe it's been a time where the news has been very volatile and unpredictable. And if that's the case, avoid news. Lower or remove your risk before news and then look look to get in trades after news, which later in the day moves have been there now. The market's in this phase for a while. Nothing wrong with, with trading past, you know, 16 GMT. Which would usually be my, I got to stop by then because the market's going to die out. That doesn't happen for now for the time being. You can wait till after news. Maybe it's the timing of getting into trades before news, and, and news has been kind of all over the place in the, in the reaction. Maybe that's the deal right now. All right. Let's see what's going on in here. I would not be buying. It's a matter of where I'm comfortable selling. Very bearish. Likely to continue. It takes some very high volume, really showing up on a one-hour chart. Some high activity, showing strength for me to consider buying. And I would likely be into lower prices anyway first before we see that. So, uh, distribution into markdown, right? Very aggressive move here. Wasn't even able to test the 14 after these couple of tests here. It's just it's kind of a marker for how strong something. He didn't even get to it for a while. Yeah. That was a bit of up move on the open. Definitely got sold into. See that everywhere. Buying here, not so much. Uh, at this point, I'm just getting a sense of where in the short term I expect it to go. If, if if it looks like there's enough buying or, you know, imbalance of more demand and supply temporarily in this bearish environment, um, then I would expect an up move and wait for that, look for that weakness to come in, mark up our areas. If we're seeing real lack of demand and on top of that, you know, the weakness on the five minute stuff, yeah. It's probably just going to keep going and going in waves, and maybe I'll catch a uh, scalp entry, which some of you know. Which this is already handing out scalp entries today. Got this earlier action a lot of times. So we're going to have the market really does go through different phases. If you haven't been trading more than a year, then you. You would not have experienced that. You know, sometimes you just have no activity until London Open. Very little. Besides maybe Asia News. Other times you you have really clean stuff and then you get to London Open and you start chopping sideways. Right? But it seems like it takes a while. Like it lasts a couple of years, a few years, and then it morphs into something else eventually. The London Open spike... I didn't think of this, and I heard this somewhere. Um, that I always you say back in the old days, guys, kids, uh, this wouldn't happen. What would happen is, you know, it was more like a gradual, like this kind of stuff. Let's say this is London Open, where it would be right here. So you get a little increase, and then, you know, as you're getting into it, right, things start to warm up and warm up. That's the way it was until maybe 2000. 12 or something, 13. Then it started to change where all of a sudden at the London Open you get the spike 
you can't read too much into it volume wise like oh we got some huge weakness or something going on no it's just going to be high right and you got to wait 5 10 15 20 minutes 30 minutes to see okay what's really going on we we can't trust this stuff the reason i heard it makes perfect sense is that there are orders cuz the the way base the way trading is now is let's say on your robinhood account even right <laughs> bucket shop but that people put in orders, 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 or off hours. And then once the market opens, they're all struggling to get their orders in. It floods, breaks the dam. Because you, you can place trades in markets pre-open so that when the market opens, it gets executed. That's what's going on all of a sudden. That's the big pop. Make sense? I forgot where I heard that. Like, yeah, okay, that must be the explanation. That's all. <laughs> and now you know. Oh, look what I found down here in the corner. Can't... Oh, it's not letting me move it. You know me and trading view. We don't, we don't get along. All right. You stay there. That's fine. Makes sense to me, though. I think that shouldn't be. Whatever. It is. That's fine. I can live with it. Uh, but I think the market should be open for you to be able to t place a trade, not have all this this backed up shit. As soon as the market opens, everybody's trying to get filled. It's kind of annoying. Uh, what's your opinion? Uh, what's your outlook? On uh, U.S. dollar, uh, do you think we could get out of the range soon? Bullish move. Yes. U.S. dollar looks bullish. Yen looks even more bullish, but yeah. So that's what's making me want to short. It seems set to do that today. Yep. Strong dollar. I mean, that's just facts, not my opinion. <laughs> There's big money positions. Now they may bail out or things could change, but that's what it is at the moment. So looking for short opportunities. For me, uh, like I say, I don't just chase price here falling, sell into support or sell at the bottom of a you know, really exaggerated move like that and start chasing it. This is a decent reaction here. It's likely to come back to the low here. Kind of choppy there. But at this point, we're seeing, even at these lower prices, you know, really due to the background, and it's not surprising, obviously, strong selling, whether it's weakness like this or lower volume into lower prices very very bearish so again it's a matter of what you're comfortable with man I got this different broker I'm going to keep it small on my first trade <laughs> hit the wrong button is it? well there it goes probably three pips of support yeah it's probably going there and breaking but the end is very strong so looking to sell against that maybe if I'm so lucky to get a actual retracement and weakness of some kind I'm not selling at the low chasing But yeah, that looks like it's set to continue. Down moves against the yen and the dollar, but especially the yen. But both. Uh, 
talk about some music, bro, Doobie. And I got anyone using IG as your broker. How you doing? We're neighbors. Signed up today. It took me five minutes. Quickest thing ever. I'm looking at the app. I like to just trade on my phone. Forget it on the computer. I want to just sit one spot. All right, seems simple enough. Everything that looks very clean and straightforward with IG. So far, I like it. If I want to have an MT4 account, I can do that. It's right there on the dashboard or whatever. Just fund it and open it. And I already got emailed the, the information to do that, whatever, password. But I don't like trading on MT4. Too many disconnections and delayed executions and all that. Usually the broker's own platform is quicker and more reliable, right? Selling AU as a test trade. <laughs> I have it on my list here. See, oh, well, they tell you. Okay, nice. All right. So again, things are looking very bearish. Strong U.S. dollar, very strong yen. Looking, I would look to sell against those today. For me, not chasing price. Let's see if we can get some sort of entry that is proper for me. Hopefully, we get a bit of a bounce in weakness. Or something where it doesn't just drop in a straight line. If it just drops, 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 and I'm not in anything, that's fine. Got to find my proper way in. All right, what else? If you're new here, welcome. Live analysis. Help you understand what the heck's going on, what you might want to do. Make your own decision. Things are looking very weak, very bearish. No reason to be going long.
this. If this wants to save very weak, maybe we can get the 14 EMA test on the next try here. And, th and then do another leg down. Uh, I can't even grab that. Whatever. And that euro's really dropping there. Support, kind of almost. Not much activity. You know what happens at support? Sellers pause their activity and see what's going on with buyers. If we sit around here on low volume, we're likely to break. Especially if we see a slightly lower price and the volume is just staying low. The lower it is, the more likely it is to break here. Here, here was the buy activity. Well, that was London Open. Uh, it's ruined. We can't get a uh, reliable read here off of that. It's going to be high volume either way because of the time of day. So, But at this point, and if we can get slightly lower, we can really find out what's going on at, on, at support. Like the Australian dollar and the euro are on the weaker side now. Uh, looks like, did I have a connection problem here? Okay. All right, looks like I was disconnected from the stream for a second, but we're back. Okay. All right, so things looking very bearish. Where's big money positioned from? The up moves on weakness last week in that range. What direction? They are short. Are they looking to get out, hold, or mark down? Well, it looks like they're looking to mark down now. Distribution into markdown. Downtrend. I will see if a proper short opportunity shows up for me. Uh, the cryptos had a nice run, didn't they? I'm up to something decent here. Oh, okay. I bought more of this yesterday. That was a good move. Ethereum. It's the new Bitcoin. It's not, a, not, a, not too much of a rejection here. I like that. So, yeah, with the cryptos, I'm just holding my swing longs. Litecoin, what you doing? That has that weirdness. I don't know if every exchange gave you that. That's insane. No, I didn't take profit there. <laughs> the hell? Who was that? One person. Triggered all these shorts. And so, I don't know. What makes more sense? It's one billionaire or... I mean, how much would it even take? Or a bunch of activity that suddenly happened. Was there breaking news on Litecoin? Come on. One guy. <laughs> I could do that. Not on Litecoin, but I can do it on some of the others. This looks nice and strong here. You see the strength off the lows accumulating there, marking up. 
Well, besides some Litecoin weirdness, I could trim down and see what I have on Litecoin. But the others are looking nice. I'm just going to hold. I like that these high, higher prices were able to hold for hours and not get rejected the way it might have if we were going to see real selling. Nice general background of strength going into markup off accumulation, right? Nice break test there and everything. Whatever. We're into markup. Technically out of the accumulation. Oh, look at that break test. There you go. Top, top, top. Break, test, continuation. And then again, the test, the continuation. Very good news for the up move. This is kind of funny, too. And I think a bunch of things, I guess, popped on that day. I don't even know what went on. Uh, whatever. Freaking light going. Uh, yeah, fill me in. Luke says, fake news on Litecoin that mainstream media promoted. Oh. Well, same old shit. They apparently had a deal with Walmart. Hmm. But Walmart was going to accept what? Litecoin or use the, use Litecoin for some... Something? All right, whatever. Fake news. It's all fake at this point. <laughs> Don't get me started. Reality is fake at this point. Oh, stop it. I hope the Matrix movie is good. Speaking of fake reality. I don't know. You know, don't get excited about these things. <laughs> My wife was like, did you see the new Matrix movie trailer? Ooh. Come on, movies suck now. It's going to be fan service. Oh, he did it again, just like he did in the first movie. He Remember that? In the roof, and in the helicopter. Oh, that was, that's what happened before. <laughs> yeah. I have a bad feeling about this. Oh, he said it. He said the thing. Oh, wrong movie, but you know. So at this point, it's very bearish, considering... What would be good for me to take a short? I did a little tiny test trade, but not a real, not a real trade. Which I did a test trade before. It's not my first. But now I'm actually looking at the chart and seeing what's going on. It was the AU short, like I said. I'm likely going to go to the support. I just want to see. My chart is FXCM. This thing is IG that I'm trading with. But that's just a little small position test I'm gonna get used to this this is the first time putting in a stop loss in a oh, I didn't put a, a target the profit but that was my main thing how do I put the stop loss in okay I got that edit position the app is decent So again, these lows are showing such lack of demand that we're very likely to say we see it here again. 
right? Like I said, if we get here and we see low volume, the lower it is, more likely it is to break to the downside. Why is that? Because there's sell activity marking down, right? And if you're a seller marking down, wouldn't you stop and see what's going to go on right there? You definitely would. The fact is, buying could increase. But if you pause your selling activity and see what the heck's going on, and volume drops off, and you have maybe a small bounce, there you demand, right? Okay. So if the volume's low here, leading to a break, and again, especially new low ground, still not showing high volume, the lower it is, the more likely it's a real breakout, and so on. So you see the information now off of this, which actually hit the support and that low volume. Again here, this is likely to be on low volume. Now there's a little more buying than selling in order for us to get a green candle, right? It did pop up. But that's only because of the extreme lack of selling for the moment. To test for them. That's how much it stops. Let's see what they're up to. Yeah, I hope the Matrix movie's good. I can't even imagine the Matrix movie being good. I can't even imagine a good movie, period, at this point. Coming from Hollywood. <laughs> I've even fallen for, you know, the past few years. Oh, this, oh that's good. This one's good. Oh, good. Yeah. Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman was good. Yeah. First one. I go see it. Uh, or it's not on Netflix. Not good? This isn't good? Ten minutes in, you're like, oh, really? Is it just me? I don't know. Movies suck now. Come on. The 80s was the height of human civilization. It's all downhill from here. Oh, I didn't check the news today. Oh, my God. All right. Checking news. The 4X Factory. Wasn't there a... I guess we'll find out. Retail sales, U.S. So that's high impact news in, what, four hours? Three hours and 45 minutes? Uh, so that is the high impact for today. Retail sales, U.S. Is it forecasted bad enough is my question, because it's probably not going to be good. Previous negative one point one forecast. The forecast not as bad as the previous. Nah, it's gonna be as bad or worse. Retail sales. Didn't all the unemployment stop? I think all that extra unemployment Americans were getting this whole time, the whole time, getting more than they actually got from their paycheck. So they just stayed home and collected all that money. You're welcome. Uh yeah. <laughs> Yeah, don't mention it. No, keep it. It's fine. Um, so yeah, that all stopped. All the extra unemployment. So I don't think retail sales are gonna be too good. Can I get a rebate or something on that? No. But that's it as far as high impact news today. 
There's a little something coming up. What is that? Needs to be president. In three hours. Speaks. Canada has some light impact news too. Okay. And what's Friday? Retail sales UK. How's that inflation going? Not good. All right. So very bearish conditions. If that's going to change, it's likely not going to happen until that U.S. news. If. So weak. How's my test trade? Stuck. So, so weak. As I said, this is what was likely to be on low volume, right? Yes. Everybody understands the logic right here? It's a good little lesson if you're new. Why does low volume here mean it's likely to break? Because the selling activity stopped so we could see and observe the buy activity. Even though it moved up, it was on very low activity. So it's sellers for the taking now, isn't it? Sometimes you could float up on low volume and they kind of wait. Or they could just go for it. But, you know, if you were looking to buy off support, obviously not. Not that I was doing that, but... Very helpful information there. It's likely to break. Now, one thing we haven't seen, even though that's already very helpful good information is the new low ground price just getting below that support there's always that chance you pop down there and volume pops up high you get your fake break rejection but that's very unlikely now again here it's the same thing Back to support. And this would apply to a one hour chart too. If you were looking at your background. It's just basic principles. Doesn't matter what time frame. Uh, so yeah. Here's support. right? Very low volume. You can't even get a, a green candle here. right? Fire's nowhere to be found. These guys are choppy. But of course, weak background is really a matter of time. They're very likely to continue down. EJ going. Likely going back to the low. That's likely going to support. Australian dollar's having a bit of a bounce. The euro's looking very weak. 
it's not they're not all trending down at this moment they're, they're testing they're pausing pound is pausing it's nice when they're all suggesting uh, an immediate down move as far as a scalp entry this got a bit of activity we'll see the outcome but it's still likely to break that support sooner rather than later but this loss it's downtrend structure got into a range again not much buying up moves could mean short opportunities on weakness or we could just be floating up here on no demand and then come down and break very soon All right. So welcome, welcome. If you just joined, it's mostly just the usual crew in here. Live analysis. Maybe it's helpful for your training. If you have any questions, let me know. Watch the videos on my channel. Learn that stuff. It's free. I don't tr quite trust this, the short scalp entries that are setting up like this one. What I'm doing is taking tiny practice trades on my new broker account so I get used to like placing my stop loss and all that. But for real, as far as if you're looking at like the EJ or this didn't even get there, but um, there is a bit of a bounce going on and it's really just... The euro is very weak. Uh, we already know the US dollar and yen are weak, but not at the moment marking down, right? Euro aside, we have a double bottom now, right? Euro aside, we have a three bottoms. We're going into a range, right? We're not in this aggressive markdown anymore. Again, AJ range. Only the this euro. Yep, that's trending down. So it's weak euro right now, right? Pound yen range. So it's really the weak euro. So when I'm shorting or getting to a position, uh, I'd rather the cause be the US dollar and the yen. If I'm selling the euro dollar, selling the euro yen, it should be the US dollar and the yen, respectively for each one, whichever it is, that's driving the situation. That's what's making the whole background bearish anyway, right? Is the strong US dollar, strong yen. So if that strong U.S. dollar is not now in progress, pushing things down, pushing things down, as I'm getting short, that's, that's something that's, okay, that's euro weakness. That's because the euro is, is getting sold right now a lot. That's very different. That's not what even gave us the weak background and all that stuff. It could be a 30-minute thing, and then it falls back in line with everybody else, right? And stops being so weak. It could be temporary. But it's not, you get it? So shorting the euro now would not be based on the cause of what's making things bearish, which is not the euro being weak, but the US dollar in the end driving everything down, being strong. And sooner or later, when you have a euro driven move, Australian driven move, yen, uh, a pound, pound driven move, you know, anything besides your dollar and yen. They're they're more short lived and their 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 influences really can be limited. You know, like how likely is it for today that everything would kind of let's say go sideways, 
against the dollar and the yen, we just end up chopping sideways. But the euro dollar and the euro yen trended down and trended down and trended down for hours. Not very likely. If things are really going to trend, they're going to really be based on the US dollar and yen pushing things around. It's much more reliable. And again, that's what the background is big based off of, right? That's why everything has this bearish background, not just the euro, right? Hopefully that's helpful as to why I'm not taking a... Uh, I did a little practice trade, but why I'm not taking a short on the EJ. Although it looks like one of my scalp entries, that's why. But as I say, as a lot of you know, if I get into a trade, it's either going to be that type of entry that I consider the scalp entry, which has been happening all day. It's these little retracements. And when you don't see demand and XYZ are correct and the reaction and blah, 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 that I can get short on these little up moves. Which this one technically did test the 14 here. That one technically did, I guess, close enough. And so that chart really suggests that. But again, if, if, if this was doing this because of the yen and not the euro, then that would be better. And that would be shown on the other pairs. Still more likely to do this, but not, not, not as high probability as, as doing it because the yen is pushing it down. So yeah, I'm not being fooled by, okay, the euro's weak, I'm going to go sell. Oh, there, everything else is moving up. Besides the euro. Last 20 minutes. Which of course means, if I don't get the entry that I just showed, type of entry is perfectly fine. And uh, there's an up move and it gives me weakness. You now, if we start bouncing, I'll, I'll I'll worry about these areas that are in here. As far as where we're going to be able to find out about cell activity coming back in, a, a little mini redistribution during the down move, right? Come on, EJ, practice trade. <laughs> Betting on the euro weakness and not the yen strength. Uh. Luckily, it's not really a uh, much money at all. Getting used to this platform. Last thing I want to do is make a mistake and hit the wrong thing. But I put a uh, stop loss. Again, it's just a little tiny position, so it's practice on this broker. First trades. Uh, if it goes against, I'm not going to, you know, I'll let the stop loss get hit. I want to see it get hit and see if it closes at the price I put and all that. Slippage or whatever. But again, that's like I explained why I'm not getting in a short at this moment. And if things are going to move up, it's fine. It's not off of any change in sentiment here. It's still bearish, and I'd be looking for that weakness. Again, a little more of an up move, and then I'll care to mark up some of the areas that matter. We can get a little higher. Too lazy to just draw them for fun. Well, this one has a fib area here and some of these swing points. Um, support resistance stuff. So if we get that up move, for example, and weakness hits there, that would be very, very good because we're in markdown off of weakness in the background. We've seen very little demand here. And then to pop in here and get rejected off weakness, get my proper five minute entry, it's extremely likely to go and break this low and, and try to deal with whatever else is back there. 
likely to get to that support, first of all. Right? That could be a 30 pip trade from there. But it's nice to see real lack of demand here. You get the up move and get weakness. And when it comes down, it's very unli unlikely that you'll even bounce off of that. It's more likely to break. But of course, it doesn't hurt to see in real time. And manage the trade if there's any issue with large demand. But it's more likely to be able to break this after weakness and coming back down because of this lack of demand here. We already know what we're selling into, right? So I would be surprised if we don't get a ton of selling in this area. Very likely. So that could be something. And they have their respective areas, which are... The more that gets tested together, the better and more inclusive, trustworthy... So whoever got in the market prematurely started selling, selling, selling. Yeah, we might have to go go after their stop loss. <laughs> EJ. <laughs> oh. Yeah. But simple, obvious swing points and uh, fib zone. That already went there. Okay. Box. Yeah, that's a nice little spot. See what goes on there. I'll be back in a minute or two. I'm here. Uh, just give me a sec. Let's let some things develop here. I think we know what we're looking for. Bounce some music while the doobie.
Again, things are bearish today. Bearish. We're going to go short. If we get a bounce, we'll see if we get weakness. Okay. Yeah, some sellers just hit that pretty hard, huh? Surprise, surprise. So, you know, off of this double bottom here and some of the chop, we're talking about the possibility of it maybe moving up and looking for a weakness. And uh, but we're already seeing some aggressive selling here uh, a bit more a bit of volume on this. You see the reaction getting sold into there. Yeah. Maybe, you know, if the buyers want to push it up, maybe the sellers can be patient and let that happen. Maybe not. But. You know, euro aside to be low in a move, in a down move, it's already taken place for the day. Uh, and chopping around and looking to jump in, just to, just to jump in. I wouldn't look to do. If things are trending, I got my scalp injuries. If things pop up and show weakness, certain areas, no demand, I can look and get in. But like, for example, here, selling right into the low in a chop, hoping that it can break right now, you know. Not the greatest. But yeah, we did see. Right, as we're looking, maybe we're gonna get higher on the on this up move. That weakness just show up. Sellers go, yeah, we're pretty aggressive actually. So maybe you want to go right back to the low again. Oh, well, there goes that. Uh so what did we say about this? It was very likely to break out, remember? And there you have it. We'll see the one minute because about price areas, not time frames. And it says uh, moderate activity. See, as I talk about new low ground, right? If we get a huge spike here and it fails to break, okay, maybe not on this try then, right? But if we're able to close down, move down, see some regular volume, it's again confirming lack of buying. It's going to continue. In this situation, late in a down move, chasing a breakout, eh, I've learned not to do that. In this particular situation. Uh, but if it does break out successfully, right, I can get the next 14 EMA test, break test continuation, and so on. But into new low ground for the day. After the open. Too chasey, right, for me. But yeah, the activity here is confirming that the, the selling is pretty aggressive. Sooner or later, one way or another, we're going to be seeing that new low ground soon, right? That's their plan, at least. EJ. Well, this stuff's pretty good. Dr. Pink. Never heard of it before. Seriously, how many strand how many kinds are there? <laughs> Thousands. They all have silly, silly names. It's getting worse and worse and more and more silly. Birthday cake, Skittles, all kinds of food. A 
Skittles with a Z. Hopefully this is helpful for everyone. Hello, Mr. Harrison. How are you? I like that little creature. Nice little fella. Never saw that before. Is he holding money? Oh, nice. So it just has a real time uh, thing. So as I say, we already knew that the buying was very, uh, we were using that as an example of what's likely to break out and explain why. And then you have new low ground, which is, again is, is, is another piece of information that's going to tell about buyers. And they did show up. There was some buying into this. All right. Now remember we have support turn resistance now. It's acting as resistance. So if there is really some legit strength coming in, right, it's not very convincing if it can't get back above that support as a result. So that's the difference between, as I say, a failed breakout, which is a bullish pattern, spring, whatever, or a break test continuation, which is a bearish pattern. So it all gets decided there. So in this case, if we're coming down off of that and they're seeing it act as, you know, we're getting the bearish pattern, the only problem is what's up with these buyers? Well, maybe we'll get through it the second time without that high volume. Maybe they're gone. They bought and now they're in the wrong direction. There's also stop losses on long positions here, right? Definitely. So that got hit. But that's how this is going to resolve itself. If this volume was low here, we'd say, okay, you know, 90% probability is a real breakout. Whatever. But that volume's there. So again, the way for that to clean up is to show us which way. If it's going to come down, maybe we see high volume again or even higher volume. And then we fail and come back, right? Or maybe we come down, the volume is low. Right? Lack of buyers. And it's all good. We say, real breakout, buyers are gone, break test continuation pattern, it's going down. Very good. Glad to help. It's like they kind of, one thing they can't agree on right now is are we marking down or are we having a retracement and re redistribution on an up move, right? I think they got their wires crossed. Euro party, sell party is on. Pound is like, okay, I guess so. If you say so. Australian dollar is like, uh, we're not marking down right now. Let's see if we can do it. But again, here we can make our conclusions on some of this information, new low ground. And here we saw the first 
volume this high in a while, right? So that, again, is the same situation as the pound. Is it a fake break showing strength? Then we're going up, and I'm not taking that because it's this situation, this bearish environment. That's not enough to make me want to be bullish. But again, that stuff leading to a short on weakness. Or does it hang out down here? We get low volume, and it's all good. Stay below that line and see lack of demand. Then it's likely going to 618 very soon. wants to do it's like they want to mark it down but they're also kind of sometimes being patient but not the euro euro is just weak and we'll see what this does as far as strength in the short term. But so again, if that pops up, does that fake break off strength? Does any sort of significant up move areas I would look to be shorting? Unless we get a huge one hour volume strength, then I would not short uh, areas to short otherwise. If there's a bounce here. That sort of thing. You can even get smaller fibs, but in this case, not really. It's just kind of a straight line. So if that bit of demand we saw leads to a bounce, right, then I'm looking at that. The lower the volume is down here, you know, from a one hour point of view, just looking at the background situation, Again, same thing I've been saying. Lower volume down here, one hour point of view, same thing. But the more likely it is to break. And if it bounces and it's not much volume on a one hour chart on that bounce, it's a very good short, right? It's likely to get there, likely to break. 618 overshoot, whatever, for the day. But this is the uh, new market, huh? This is what it is now, I guess. These early moves. So weird, the way it evolves. It's constantly morphing. Years and years and years, it was... You cannot take a trade during Asia... Asia... Asia, <laughs> Asia session. You can't take a trade. It's going to sit there for three hours, four hours. It's not going to go anywhere. That's not the case now. Asia session. No, I have not had a drink. It used to be so dead. And again, so many times you open the charts and that's when the actual trending move occurred and you get into London Open and it starts ranging. That's a diff That's a new one. And eventually we move. And again, plenty of time because the activity goes for a while now. It doesn't stop. Yeah, then couple hours after New York news and it just dies out. Not anymore. So that's kind of the mood now a lot of times. The early move, London open, kind of range, you kind of waiting for news. And then after that, we get some more moves for the day. Uh, intraday cryptos I haven't been doing, no. Just swing trading. Um, if we were in a very bullish environment, you know, really trending up and just seeing quick dips get bought into and all that going on, then I would maybe be more, more aggressive in, you know, just being able to buy on Coinbase. Coinbase. <laughs> Coinbase, yes. <laughs> um... But I had the Kraken account, and I and I was using that for shorting, and I th lost that. There's some regulation now, I, whatever happened with them. 
so I can only buy cryptos again. I'm back to that until I figure that out. But when it comes to if I intraday trade cryptos, it's like if it's doing its extremely bullish stuff or I will take some, you know. Now it's been like eh, range, range, range. It's trying to get out. I'd rather just hold my swing positions. It depends on the environment. But I didn't want to be buying along with what I have now on my swing position longs and be buying intraday, just adding to, you know, if it my risk on a, on a down move. Those two things adding together as risk on a down move. Not in this environment. I think probably the best thing as far as if anyone's doing like my swing stuff and if you're approaching cryptos like me, it's, you have the swing stuff always going, of course, but if it's either very bullish or very bearish, then there's an opportunity to trade intraday. If you're ranging, chopping, it's 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 not so obvious where we're going right now, right? Then I just work the swing positions and be patient. Yeah, like the video I was doing, the aggressive kind of day trading. Yeah, that, in this environment, I wouldn't want to do to add to that risk if it moves down. I'm just letting the swing positions do what they're going to do now. Which has been good, buying off the bottom of the recent range. And then now in the last, uh, what, week? Getting those pops, yeah. That makes sense, right? But it's really an obvious direction, whether it's up or down. If you're able to sell, it depends what broker you're using and everything. That's when I get more into day trading. Back when I made that video, you know, it was like, sky's the limit with the cryptos. Okay, so I have my swing positions and I'm managing them and all that. But I can also work that into a daily scale, an intraday scale, and, and work it like that. If that, you know, if it's very bullish, very bearish, you know. Uh, cool, cool. Yeah, buying at the bottom of the range. Those up and down. See, that's the thing. About everything. Both directions. So, generally for swing traders, I'm on a daily chart, but... Let's say you're buying some dips, buying some dips. Of course, you plan for this stuff. Here, so much opportunity to buy, fake breakout strength. And at this point, to, to be in between, you should be at least back to where you were before, you know, like a here, as far as your balance. Be close to it, at least. You're able to accumulate here and do what you got to do. I think that was some, yeah, I mean, really obvious stuff as far as the strength, right? Uh, you could probably do the Wyckoff thing in here. <laughs> the Wyckoff thing. Of course, Ethereum has really proven itself, right? Nice. It's the new Bitcoin. All right. Yeah, I'm just letting my swing positions do what they're going to do. If we get another leg up, basically, like we continue up another, I don't know, 5% move generally on things, on cryptos, then I'll be into some nice new high ground on my account that I haven't seen since before the, you know, dealing with that whole accumulation thing. Yeah, failed to break out here for the moment. Yeah, so it's becoming sideways chop. Still, the background is bearish. Up moves in weakness. I'll be looking to short. If we just go and start trending down, 
I'm not seeing an issue with strength. Hmm. I would look to get in. This is now the bullish pattern, right? We're talking about that, which could be, could have been break test continuation, accepting lower prices, level. So that became a bullish pattern. Not that there was any huge strength, but it kind of means for now, maybe we're not so strong trending down. I'll be patient. I got my test trades on with my new broker, EJ and AU short. If it moves up and hits my stop, at least it's a test to see that my stop gets hit and there's no slippage or any funny business. But as far as a real trade, yep, either something really clear and trendy starts coming back or we get the up moves in weakness. That's how I'm going to do it. But still, things are extremely bearish. It's going to end up at lower prices sooner rather than later. Generally everywhere here against the yen and the dollar. But yeah, with the cryptos, well, since I made the course, there was, you know, it, things finally chilled out, became less uptrend, uptrend, uptrend. And I think so now, that's been the, the latest lesson is, yep, stick to the plan and trust the plan. <laughs> Sometimes there's weeks where you're like, ugh, come on. But that's called swing trading, yes. And, uh... Percentage-wise, even with, with those periods of waiting, you look at your percentage return, right? Okay. Very little work for that. Sometimes you get a lack of any returns because of these slow times, but it all works out to be a pretty good percentage. And also, you know, if you really survive these moves, the last couple of down moves, it reacted right and got through it. It's a good experience. I think during during the if you got the course during the uh, like twenty classes or something that goes come with the course. I spent a lot more time talking about worst case scenario and bad things happening than you know taking profit. That's easy. Like how do you deal with that? And a lot of people got destroyed in July, was it? June? Destroyed. I trimmed down my position. I didn't sell all of it. A lot of it. Uh, and But I held, according to my plan, I also sold on Kraken and hedged. But that's another story. I can't do that now. But there's the hedging option. Um... You know, I was saying for a very long time, I'm not shorting cryptos. I'll let you know when I do, but now is not the time. Could be a month, could be two years or whatever. And then th the time came. <laughs> it happened. And so to talk about that, it's not just this ever-expanding bubble. It's got its ups and downs. It's a little more in reality now as far as things. Regular trading situation. Um... And the option to be able to hedge when things are really melting down to be able to uh, have a maybe a separate account besides Coinbase or whatever, do it, you know, however you can do it um, and make money off of that down move. And the hedge idea is not to actually, I'm looking to profit off the down move. It's I'm looking, I'm looking to limit my losses if it moves down. So you still, you know, have could have a biased long position where an up move makes you money, but if things are just trending down and all you're seeing is weakness and not demand coming in and you're in this down and it's projecting a, a you know a whole other leg down on the daily chart is looking really bearish, yeah, have that you know it's one option is to have a separate account or you know where you can hedge it. You thin out your your positions, maybe your swing account, or you close them all together, whatever. But. You know, it's no longer this ever-expanding up move, a bubble that, you know, has legit down moves. But the idea is to limit those losses, really limit them. So that's what I did. I was able to take a, a chunk out of that, what would have been a loss, by um, actually doubling that side account and then taking that money and putting it back into my Coinbase account now. And that's it. 
So it just it, it ate into my loss, you know, limited the the downside loss. And it was, you know, of course, there's the option of closing your swing long positions and and just opening some shorts if it's really looking like that, based on your analysis. But you know, we just never talked about it before because it was like, don't sell cryptos, <laughs> you're gonna get killed. And it was I was right to say that for over a year. Then okay, now here we are. Here we are. Okay. So that's one option, right? And so I know uh, some of you have the crypto course. So let's think of it as an update. And maybe I should, you know, put another video in there with the course now. Things have developed into, you know, I would actually short cryptos now. You know. For a very long time, it was no, no, no. Rightfully so. <laughs> so we're just kind of choppy sloppy here. We know we're bearish if we get an up move. Look for weakness to short. If we continue down, everybody starts breaking their lows properly and starting to trend down. Then I can look for a scalp entry that way. Expect it to continue unless you see strength. Get to its next whatever destination, a larger time frame. So that's the plan. Yeah, but besides Euro being weak itself and being able to trend. Pound went nowhere since the open, right? Failed the breakout, so it went nowhere. This went nowhere. Nope. Sideways chop, sideways chop, right? So it was wise to say, okay, uh, you don't want to jump in short. There's no reason to do that. As bearish as things were. The euro, that's a separate cause, but as far as the strong dollar, strong yen, didn't cause any sort of down move really yet, has it? No. And as far as my method of getting in, there's been no confirmation of any sort of short. Just that we know that that's the background. Patience, patience. Pete, how are you so patient? I don't like losing money. Good answer. Okay. How are you so patient crossing the street? Let's go. <laughs> oh, red lights. I'm just going to go. I'm patient. Up or down could be an opportunity, right? Let's get out of this range now. It didn't prove to us. That it's a, a runaway down move or didn't show enough weakness that we expect it to just go for any particular reason. And it's just hanging out. So, more of a timing thing. If we can get to the, back to the markdown or. or or weakness prepositioning short might be around the news maybe sooner we'll know when we see it but to not be in a good to not be in a real trade I'm in my practice trade while this is now being choppy yep I'm glad I don't mind that I missed the euro really fine
What's up? What's up? What's up? I'm just marking uh, if there's any sort of up move from here. You know, the fibs have to be updated if we make a new low. But if we get any sort of bounce to uh, see where we could hit some weakness in a setup, these are good areas. I see sellers uh, build up again. Good to have you. Good morning, good morning. So yeah, we can see things are just kind of taking a break right now. Sideways, volume activity falling off. Sideways, sideways. Eh, maybe it wants to go for another leg down. Yeah, it looks like that's going to try for it. For the most part, haven't been able to trend down in this bearish environment besides the euro itself. So I will wait. The market wants to wait. I will wait. Activity is just dying off for the most part. Again, up moves in weakness, looking to short, just marked up some areas. Or down moves uh, in a trending way. I look for my entries for that. US dollar, yen, driven stuff. So we see the majority, if not all of them, are moving down, get out of their stuck range. Yeah, you could probably say if the Australian dollar, AU, AJ, start trending down again to the low ground, yeah, then, then the dollar and the yen are the cause. And a couple others going with them, you know, the dollar and the yen are causing it. Like, are we going for it or are we waiting? They can't decide.
All right, so I'm hanging out. Let things develop. Know what we're looking for. Yeah, the volume I'm using is uh, FXCM. So your trading view, just load up the, when you, you know, put in the symbol, your dollar or whatever, pick the FXCM option, you'll have the same volume as me. The indicator colors are nothing fancy, really, if you're, talk, if you're talking about the colors. You're probably talking about that. Okay. That is... Oh, it doesn't have the name on it. I took it off. This is the name of the volume indicator right here. C vol B underscore LP. So if you search that in the indicators, you'll get that. These are the settings. <coughs> I don't think I changed these. But you got to change the colors. They're going to be completely wrong. So here's the colors that you want. Is that what you were asking? Yeah, okay. So there's the colors. Obviously the red and green are, are what matter. I forgot how it was when you first get it, but it's it was not that. I know it looks all fancy. I'm the last person to say use a fancy volume indicator. Better volume. Come on. It's not better. Worse volume. Um, the colors are just there to show if we have excessive volume into down moves, then it's green. Or excessive volume into up moves, then it's red. So it just kind of helps at a glance, but it's not important at all because you can see that anyway. So if it was all just one color, it would just be a regular volume indicator and it would be fine. It's bells and whistles. I don't really trade without it. It's nice at a glance. Whatever. Right now we're bearish and there's a lot of green on the chart, so <laughs> that's not very helpful. So you still got to do it, do your analysis. You know these greens may be uh, into low ground, and maybe that's what's yeah, okay. That's strength, but there's your result. Here, weakness, good old regular weakness on an up move. So it's it's not like, you know, 100%. You know what? Forget it. Don't use it. <laughs> All right. Enjoy. Just talk myself out of it. I'm taking it off. No, it's fine. So again, we're quite bearish. Besides the euro, the market doesn't seem to want to mark down at the moment. Maybe it's waiting for a U.S. session. Get out of its chop. Find my way in, perhaps either an up move or down move, as I said. But I would like these guys to, to move before I touch them.
sideways since London opened. No reason to jump in. At least for me.
All right. <clears throat> so, yeah, things are a bit very choppy. But as I explained, up moves weakness, looking to short. Down moves lack of strength, back and short. But a high probability move out of the range that's been formed since the London Open, not there, right? Could go either way. So I'm not looking to jump in anything in this price range, right? Shorting into up moves, if that reacts right. Selling once this breaks with lack of demand in the proper way, scalp entries. Again, the background is <clears throat> showing it's very weak. I would only be looking to sell unless we have some very high volume demand coming in. Something that shows up on the one hour chart is high volume demand, which is basically into lower prices uh, or the less common way is that you'll see high volume somewhere else, but it'll lead to a down move as a result if you're not able to really, uh, an up move rather, if we're talking about strength. So it would either show up into a down move and high volume, high volume in a one hour chart that would say, okay, we could consider the long entries. Things have changed, the background changed. Or if you see high volume somewhere else, there's my point. And you're saying, is that weakness into the up move? What's going on? Right. Well, of course, you're always looking at it, the result of that high volume. And if it is high volume leading to higher prices and higher prices that are not being sold into anymore, right, then it's likely bullish and that the high volume did occur, just not in the typical lower price kind of way. So, you know, for example, on news, we could move up high volume because it's news you're thinking okay let's confirm this weakness and instead you flow it up on low volume and, you can't, and you're actually trending up off of that the result is up off that high volume and things the background now changed again considering if the, if the volume's high in a one hour chart that could happen on news so as far as what would change things it's really one of those two it has to be high volume leading to an up move whether it's strength into a down move or and not move that continues as a result of the high volume without weakness. So that should kind of simplify the background. We already know why it is what it is, right? We looked at that and then how it could change. All right, I guess I'll hang out a bit longer, but end it soon, because it may, we might be just sitting around here until U.S. and the news, high impact news, U.S. today. That's it for the high impact. Uh, besides the euro, sell off, not much going on. Might be waiting. Um, But yeah, at least I'm back. I can now trade again. My broker situation's worked out. Yay. Wouldn't be me if I didn't disappear. <laughs> so I didn't plan on streaming today, but I got my situation together with the broker, so I decided why not. But yeah, back into the routine now. Try to do at least two days a week, three, four. I mean, streaming without being able to trade, right? Oh, <laughs> just looking at setups come and go. Couldn't do it. I didn't even open a chart. So annoying. So back to the routine. I'll be around. Makes the trading experience better for me, hopefully for you.
I get more focused. At this point, <clears throat> you know, I could even set an alert. You know, if if the AJ makes a new gets anywhere near that fifty fib up in here, I can set an alert, right? You can do it on your phone. Because that's where I am at this point. We need to get out of this range. Right? Like maybe just above this high. Okay, and you're nearing fib and all that, set an alert there. In here I wouldn't do anything. There's just no high probability outcome of this range right now, right? You see the activity just dying off. Again, it's like, don't let the euro weakness sell off on the euro fool you. The market is sideways. It really is. <laughs> Dollar and the yen are chilling right now. That's it. Even EJ started to go sideways now in its structure. So even that, even the euro pair stopped. <clears throat> So again, you know, I could set an alert up here or again, you know, very close to the low. So I guess I get on the charts and see what happens off a of low. So that's where I'm at. Don't need to stare at it. Set an alert here, you know, heads up if it's getting near this high. See if I want to take a short off weakness, lack of demand here. Up to a 6.8 overshoot and looking for weakness in this area. Confirm that. That's a good trade. That's a good spot if that comes around. Back to the low as a target, see how it reacts. Look for it further. If there's not a lot of demand, that could be a good one. Now, I don't believe is the time. Again, those of you who know the scalp method. If we don't get any up move, we just start trending again. Okay. I have our ways in. Here's the website. I'll just type that in the chat. I lowered the prices of the courses extremely. So that's there. It's cheap. And of course, as I always say, if you don't buy the courses, that's fine. Watch the YouTube videos. It's free. Now I'm doing these streams. If you have the patience, <laughs> go back and watch. I try to pack good information and watch it at one and a half speed. Every day is different. So you uh, should be eventually not a nice library of learning material on the channel. Yeah, there's, there's no urgency right now on these charts, right? No urgency. I forgot the dot. Can I edit? Not to be confused with my effects sauce, which is my hot sauce brand. No. No urgency, says the market. We'll get there. I would say this. If they're not marking down, what can we conclude? Logic. Very bearish. They got all these short positions back there. They want lower prices. They expect lower prices. Get them into further profit. But they're not marking down right now. They're not, uh, not marking down because of large demand coming in. It's just quiet. 
So do they expect higher prices to sell into? Possibly. Only so many outcomes, right? It's not like they're dumping their positions. We're not seeing getting out of these short positions. So knowing they're holding it, is it sell into an up move? That's likely, very possible, wherever that may be. Uh, but these areas will reveal factually if they're looking to do that. Uh, maybe it's a wait and see for news. Again, knowing they're holding shorts, though, where it could drop on news, and that wouldn't be surprising. Great, perfect. Or maybe it's a, you know, again, a wait and see what happens on news, and you see a pop up and a continuation, and they got out of these short positions on high volume up and with a higher price result without weakness. But the thing is, as far as the entries, right, if we see weakness, then we know that they're expecting it to continue from that point. Jumping in now, right, that up move and weakness could hit a stop loss. So it's, we're, you know, aligning with them in the right price area. The majority of short positions are at higher prices now. So it would be a step behind to jump in here and say, well, they're short and it's going to go down. Well, they may sell into an up move that hits your stop loss. And seeing them sell into that up move now gives you the probability that it's going to go for it, of course, right? Obviously, we have lack of demand to follow. But that's the logic. Got sauce? <laughs> Actually, I should do my coffee brand if I was going to... No. I love capitalism, but... I'm not going into the hot sauce business. I'll endorse it if you want to make a good product. Send it to me. I'll endorse it. Don't get any on your on your mouse on your phone hot sauce you're taking a trade and you, and you rub your eyes All right. All right. So I will uh maybe be on tomorrow, but anyway, I'm back. So all good. Two, three, four times a week be here. Uh, and we know what we're looking for today. No urgency at the moment, as I explained. So we'll see how that turns out. We'll look at it. <laughs> All right. Send me a sample. Hot sauce in your eye. Yes, out of... <laughs> Imagine your, your trade's running against you. you. You didn't set your stop loss right. You're struggling to get it in, but you touched your eye now with the hot sauce because you thought it would make your trade better. Can't see what you're doing. That's the goal. If we can make that happen at least one person. It's worth it. All right, guys. See you soon. Uh, the Discord link is in the description. Anybody here that's not in the Discord, you can join there. And 99% of you could not talk and lurk. It'd be weird. Probably in 15 other trading groups. That's why you're not talking. Anyway, sounds great, right? But uh, I'll uh, at least give a heads up there when I stream, if you want to know. And uh, any questions in there, I eventually do answer them. All right. Discord link. Like the video, subscribe, hit the bell, uh, F off. All right. All right, guys. No, thanks for being here. See you again soon.